Have you ever considered how plants talk to one another? Or if they even communicate at all? Not too long ago, a scientist considering the idea of plant communication would have been ostracized. Research funds were almost certainly never going to be granted into the investigation of such a ludicrous idea, and yet today, we know for a fact that plants have extensive networks of mycorrhizal fungi through which they not only communicate, but exchange vital nutrients. Peter Wollobin begins his book, The Secret Life of Trees, with a fantastic story. He was working on a forest in western Germany when he found a 400-year-old tree stump. By all logic, that stump should have been dead. The stump had no green leaves, no way to gather energy for itself, yet Wollobin concluded the tree stump was alive. The only explanation for that was that the stump was getting help from its neighbors. It was only later that forest ecologist Suzanne Simard changed the game forever. Simard had long suspected that plants had means of communication, but she needed to objectively prove this. She noticed that researchers had made trees transfer carbon between each other in a lab, and she wondered whether that would be the case in the real world. Simard then nursed 80 saplings of Douglas fir, paper birch, and western cedars in a forest. When those plants became sufficiently large, she borrowed some dangerous equipment from her university, namely a radioactive isotope of carbon and a Geiger counter. She then put plastic bags over her trees and injected the radioactive carbon-14 isotope into a bag containing a paper birch. She also injected the fur bag with a stable carbon-13 isotope. One hour later, she came back with the Geiger counter. She tested the birches leaved, which returned the typical Geiger counter noise, indicating radiation. As expected, the leaves had taken up the radioactive gas. She then tested the fur, the same noise. The fur was also radioactive. Somehow, the birch had transferred carbon to the fur. Simmerd also found that the birch tree had taken the stable carbon-13 isotope. Paper birch and Douglas fir were in a lively two-way conversation, she recounted. Notably, she noticed the trees weren't communicating with the cedar species nearby. Today, it's known that plants have a symbiotic relationship with mycorrhizal fungi. The plants allow the fungus to colonize their roots and even give it sugar in exchange for help getting water, obtaining nutrients, and communicating with other plants. Some trees, for example, can warn their neighbors of impending insect attacks through these mycorrhizal networks and the neighbors are known to put up their defenses in advance of these attacks. It's theorized that trees evolved this because it's in their individual and collective interest to keep neighboring trees alive, as this supports their local microclimate. As Peter Wollobin said, each tree fights for each other, so the whole forest will survive. Every tree is interested in keeping its neighbors alive because together they create a special climate, which is cool, humid, where every tree feels comfortable. Little is known about these communication systems outside of the fact that they exist, and what motivates some trees to help out certain neighbors, but not other ones. Much scientific controversy still exists as to whether this demonstrates some type of intelligence on the tree's part, and overly enthusiastic scientists are already comparing mycorrhizal networks to animals' nervous systems. Plant communication offers great insight into the interconnectedness of nature. So did you know that plants can actually communicate with one another and send out warning signals? 